This week on the Journal Editorial Report, 50 years after Lyndon Johnson declared war on poverty, President Obama says poverty is still winning, and he's pushing forward with more government solutions. But is there a better way? Some prominent conservatives are weighing in. Plus, former Defense Secretary Robert Gates making some waves with his new memoir, what it tells us about the president and his foreign policy. And New Jersey Governor Chris Christie at the center of a political scandal are his 20 16 presidential ambitions at risk. Welcome to the Journal Editorial Report. I'm Paul Gigo. President Obama marked the 50th anniversary of Lyndon Johnson's War on Poverty this week, declaring that there's more work to be done and using the occasion to push a domestic agenda that includes an extension of long-term jobless benefits, a minimum wage increase, and a new government initiative to create economic promise zones. But some prominent conservatives are coming out with anti-poverty plans of their own and pushing back on the president's government approach. The current government programs that are designed to address poverty, they help alleviate some of the pain of poverty, but they do not help people emerge from it. They do not help people rise above it. We have got to deal with that and with opportunity inequality, not just income inequality. The president's got the wrong focus. Joining the panel this week, Wall Street Journal, political diary editor Jason Riley, assistant editorial page editor James Freeman, and Washington columnist Kim Strassel. So, Jason, let's first talk about the Democratic agenda and their focus on income inequality, because they're the people who are driving this right now as part of their election year campaign theme. Why now? Well, a couple reasons, Paul. I think, obviously, the Obamacare rollout has been such a disaster. It's what everyone is talking about. It's been driving down the president's approval rating. Um, so they want to change the subject. Uh, but secondly, this is sort of an evergreen for the left. Uh, income inequality, class warfare issues, they think it works for them. So I think this is an effort to get back to something they're comfortable discussing in election year. They think it will resonate with people in this economy. And that's another reason they're doing but it. But here's one of the downsides, I would assume, anyway. They've been in charge for five years. Yes, yes. Okay? You know, real median family income, mm -hmm. uh, household income, is down right. since the recovery began. Mm -hmm. Doesn't this bring attention to those? Yes, it does bring attention to an issue they haven't done a particularly good job of covering. But I also think there are some uh, some landmines, frankly, in here for Republicans wading into the to, uh, playing on the Democrats' turf on this this issue. Traditionally, Republicans have focused on growth and economic opportunity. This would have them talking. We heard Rubio talking about his own plan, anti-poverty plan. Paul Ryan, another congressman, is out has been out there talking about anti-poverty. I think. Republicans and conservatives should be wary of playing this game on the left's terms to the extent that it gets them off message, off that message of economic growth and spreading opportunity for people, I think it could do some harm to their prospects. But what about a critique of the, of the oh. 50 years of war on poverty? $20 trillion we have spent. The poverty rate now is roughly the same as it was, uh, uh, only a little bit better, 15%. Uh, That's uh, right. 14%, I mean, 7%, not much better. Uh, obviously, uh, the definition of poverty has come up a bit, but uh, yeah, basically, the, the $21 trillion investment uh, hasn't uh, really moved the needle on uh, poverty rate. And uh, I think the problem for Republicans right now is they understand that the answer here is growth economics. The answer here is creating more jobs as opposed to government handouts. But when it gets into the details, they seem to have trouble right now uh, advocating a real uh, free market agenda. We heard uh, Marco Rubio give a sort of speech about free market principles, but then he concluded it by uh, suggesting a bunch of tweaks to existing federal programs. So I think uh, along with uh, lauding the free market, they have to say, how are we going to get more of it? Well, Kim, let me, let, let, me, let me see if you agree with our two skeptics here about I whether not. or not the Republicans <laughs> ought to be go treading on, on, on this turf. Do you think that they're doing the right thing? They absolutely have to tread on this turf, okay? Yeah, they want to talk about Obamacare, and they will talk about Obamacare, but President Obama is forcing this debate. He wants this year to be about his inequality agenda, and we know what happens when Republicans do not have an answer for that. Look at Mitt Romney in 2012. So it is good news that you have a newer and younger generation of Republicans who are coming out. And I, I disagree. I think that these are innovative ideas. What you are seeing is Republicans acknowledging, yes, we need some sort of safety 
net for some of these programs. But some of the ideas are great. Returning to the state's control over how you administer a lot of these programs, allowing for a lot more innovation, getting rid of some terrible things in the tax code like the earned income tax credit. These are these are not tweaks. These are important changes and they're overdue coming from the Republican Party. And, and I would say economic, I mean, excuse me, education reform sure. as a tool of economic upward mobility is, oh. is crucial. So, I mean, to take on Kim's argument sure. saying I'm, I'm all for that and I'm all for Republicans and conservatives discussing that the problem with debating income inequality with the left is their definition of equality Paul they're talking about outcomes and they're talking about quotas and set asides and numerical outcomes and and proportionate you know numbers of women and blacks and Hispanics and others in certain positions right. are rising to certain levels that is not about equality when, when Republicans talk about equality they talk about equal opportunity and, and what's and wrong with that isn't that the way to counter the argument that focuses on equal Absolutely. outcomes by focusing on equal opportunity and yeah, yeah, upward but, mobility, okay, the opportunity you, to move up and stay up. How do you get up. that? It's not by turning the income, earned income tax credit into another type of federal benefit. It, it, it's not by uh, taking the restraints off welfare reform and continuing to dole the money out. It's by having lower taxes and less regulation. Republicans feel like that's an old message for them, so they need something new. Well, what, but I think their no, job is politics. Politicians is to describe it in a new way because they know that's the right answer. Kim? Look, you know, you, you, the, a lot of people want Republicans to go out and just say, get rid of all of these programs, okay? And by the way, that was the approach a lot of them had prior, for instance, to the 1990s welfare reform. It was the decision finally to go out and work with the other side, uh, push them, pressure them to actually have to reform the program. Not say get rid of it, but reform it that finally allowed for some major progress in that area. And I think that that's what you're seeing Republicans doing is talking, not saying get rid of these programs, but figure out a way to make them operate much better. All right. Very good debate. And we'll have more on this in future shows. When we come